This week we are bringing back the Pinebook Pro. We're introducing the new Quartz 64 Model B and the PinePhone Pro has had some progress on the camera. This is the video version of the community update so it won't include everything but it will give you a synopsis. Also shout out and thanks to JF, Dylan, Dizzymick, Alex, Brian, and Lucas for helping out. And if you want more videos about open source related topics, check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd. Let's start with apologizing for the delay of the update. Lucas was doing a bunch of Pine64 EU paperwork, which means that these community updates will now be releasing on the 28th of the month instead of the 15th. And also sorry if I sound a bit sick as I just recovered from the virus. Last year we made a pledge to donate pine books, and we would like to inform you that the first pine books have made their way to children in need of a laptop. Thanks to one laptop per child for helping us reach a school where students badly needed laptops. We have started going through Quartz Pro 64 developer pre-orders, and with units now rolling off the factory floor, we will dispatch the first boards. We are going to send the boards in smaller batches instead of dispatching all the boards at once, which will allow us to progress and monitor development engagement. So, if you filled out an application to pick up Quartz Pro 64 at a reduced developer price of $150 and won't hear from us in the coming weeks, we will be sending out batches for the next few months. And for those interested, developer pre-orders are still open. Lastly, we would like to address the Pine64 EU delay. Lucas had to cut through several layers of red tape, and while we cannot discuss too much, we have gotten lawyers to help the process go along, and we hope that all the legal paperwork is sorted out in the next two to three weeks. You can stay updated on it through Pine64 EU's Twitter and Macedon. Earlier this month, we dropped the Quartz 64 Model B that sports the same SoC found in the Model A, but with a more familiar form factor and priced at $60 for 4GB of RAM. While the Model A is geared more towards the development community, the Model B is meant to be an easy to integrate option for regular end users. It does offer fewer I.O. options than the Model A, but still manages to deliver solid connectivity, including two USB 2 ports and one USB 3, a gigabit Ethernet, as well as onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, PIP, CISI, DSI, and a mini PCIe slot. We are happy on how well the board is supported software-wise and how it performs. Lucas tried Manjaro Plasma on it and it performed relatively well, even while running under 4K. It runs perfectly fine under Wayland thanks to the Panfrost GPU driver and will go as far to say that it'd be a great candidate for a 4K kiosk running a dedicated app or browser as well as an emulation box. Code for both the Model A and B development boards as well as the SO quartz have made their way in the kernel 5.19. The VLP2 driver for HDMI output was accepted in the kernel 5.19, but the DTS changes won't be there until kernel 5.20. Now that there's good kernel support, we are looking to offer a wide variety of OS choices. Manjaro has done a great job, but we are aware that some people may need a Debian-based image or a specialized OS like LACA to meet their requirements. So, if you are associated with a project and would like to support Quartz 64, reach out to an admin. The Quartz 64 Compute module has already been available for some time, and the first pre-release OS images for the module have now been made available. With the software taking shape, the SO Quartz host boards have entered production and should be available soon. Aside from a Model A type host board, which is essentially an I.O. breakout board for the SO Quartz, we will also offer a Blade board. This has been designed for clustering and up to 12 can fit in a 1U server rack. The I.O. is located on the short leading edges, allowing for easy I.O. access and cable management. More info about these boards will be available soon. It has been an entire year since the last batch of Pinebook Pros, and people have been continually asking for us to bring it back. Well, we are pleased to announce that it has entered production again and will be available for purchase at some point in late June or early July, at the price of $219. The hardware remains mostly unchanged from the 2021 version of the laptop. However, because of production hurdles that caused a huge delay in the batches, these new laptops will have different LCD panels and a different battery that is 400mAh smaller. The laptop has become a very mature platform, especially with the recent developments on the PinePhone Pro. There have been recent updates for Manjaro, and last week post-market OS GNOME got updated too. Kylie Linux on these laptops have been popular recently for pen testing use cases, and you can now use the Kylie kernel on U-Boot instead of compiling your own, making the install process much easier now. Debian and Fedora are also available with all the OS choices listed on the wiki. The next batch of PinePhone Pros should be available in June or early July, and as always, we will notify you in our social media channels when this happens. Maggie has brought up support for the main camera, 
forward ported the BSB driver for the selfie camera and integrated it into the kernel tree. This is still limited, for example app developers need to integrate the user space support themselves and taking photos right now requires command line loops to jump through, but this is one step closer to bringing it to the original PinePhone's functionality. Mobile OS's now have support for Bluetooth hands-free calls which allow you to accept calls from devices like cars, and post-market OS users will soon be able to benefit from these patches. Lastly, a community member recently made a script for configuring and managing Wagerade, including installing a custom ROM in the container and enabling or disabling Google Apps. This contributor has also created a script for installing Maui Shell if you're interested in the Maui Shell Alpha. Good stuff. There have been some issues identified with the PinePhone keyboard and a few complaints about the lack of transparency for these issues, but the written version of this update has a long write-up about some of the issues the keyboard has. It is very technical and too long to summarize, so I'll just hard recommend you to read the write-up on the written version of this update. The first PineSound dev boards have been allocated, and Lucas has tried out the PineBud prototypes this month. The earbuds themselves are nice, really small and light, and they aren't the smallest buds ever, but they are smaller than most. The default tuning sounds good with a V-shaped sound signature, but if you are not a fan of V-shaped sound signatures, you will be able to reflash the internal equalizer with any sound signature you want. We've gone through a few renders to decide how we want the outside of the buds to look, but we aren't guaranteeing any of these to be final. And the carrying case still has some way to go. The prototype currently has no charging or battery LEDs, which is something we would like to add, and we're going with a sliding opening mechanism instead of a hinge. This is still proof of concept, and it's clear that we need some refining, but we've zeroed in on a suitable battery for inside the case and we'll update you on the progress of this project. In terms of Affinity Time development, the team has been merging more patches for the next release, and the team is working to use the external flash memory of the watch for photos and fonts, allowing us to free up memory. The Pine Time Light Fork has already had some successful experiments with loading resources from external memory, and we hope to achieve a similar result in Affinity Time. ITD, a AffiniTime daemon and GUI application, has had a new release with a whitelist feature that is useful if you have multiple pine times. It also implements all of the functionality from AffiniTime, like the file system and weather APIs, which makes the lives of developers much easier, even if it isn't usable for non-devs yet. Stargate 01 has created a new fork designed to expose high-frequency data from the Accelerometer. They have built a companion app to display this data in real time, which could be useful for a developer who wants to develop algorithms and signal processing based on the PineTime Accelerometer. So, that is this month's update. Sorry for the delay, and have a good life.